can do this. I can do this. I can do this. Si podemos. We can do this. We can do this. I can do this. Si podemos. We can do this. I can do this. We can do this. Si podemos. We can do this. Hey everybody, so glad that you are in church this weekend, wherever you're watching from. We are so delighted that you are here. Man, we are in precarious times. It's interesting times. Church looks a little bit different, but we are certainly glad that you are here. Man, worship was amazing. I don't know about you, but my greatest moment of the week is to be able to look into this camera and be able to talk to the church. Just, we miss you. Just, man, April and I radically miss you guys, and we look forward to the day where we can all come together in this building and worship together and hug together and celebrate together. But until then, we're going to continue to do church because listen, although the building is closed, the church is not closed, will never close. And the Bible says that the gates of hell will not be able to prevail against the work that Jesus is doing. So welcome to church today. We are so glad you're here. Not only is it a good day to be in church, but I think it's a good day to be a Bucks fan. Come on, somebody. We got Tom Brady. We got Rob Gronkowski. We had an amazing draft this past week. And I just think it's a good, come on, some of y'all got to find something to celebrate today. You're wallowing in all your depression and discouragement. You better find something today that you can celebrate. And so I'm celebrating that I'm in church today, but I'm also celebrating that the Bucks are going to be better this year than last year. But let's, little caveat here if the season happens, but I'm believing in faith. So anyways, glad that you're here today. We're really, really glad that you're here. Uh, if it's your first time tuning in to All Things Wellspring, we're glad that uh, you've tuned in, whether on Facebook or YouTube or Instagram, or maybe you're watching right there on our website. We are so glad that you are here. Well, let me pray, and then we're gonna dive into a series called We Can Do This. We started it last week, but let me pray. Let me pray for us together, wherever you're watching. From Father, we open up our hearts, our minds, God. We, we silence every distraction wherever and whenever we're watching this. We pray that uh, you would enlighten us, that we would hear you from heaven, God. We don't just want to be encouraged through a simple sermon. We need to be transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit, and that can only come from you. And so, Father, we're ready. We're willing. God, speak to our hearts. Challenge us today. God, we want to be different. We worship you, we honor you in Jesus' name. Come on, and everybody said amen. Well, we're in the middle of a series. You can see it right here. It's called We can do this. And so what we've decided to do over the next few weeks, and we started it last week, we just, just picking some things that we can do in this quarantine virus season, just some things that we can decide today that we can do. And so last week we said, we can stop making excuses. We can do that. We together, we can choose and make the decision. We will stop making excuses excuses. Today I want to talk to you about something else that we can do. And this one's a little bit deeper, maybe a little bit harder, maybe a little bit more like stepping on your toes today. But I think today we can make this decision. We can stop complaining. Come on. We can stop complaining. I don't know about you, but it's easy to complain about the big things. It's easy to complain about the small things. How many of you, wherever you're watching from and whoever you're watching with, how many of you admit today, come on, how many of you admit that you complain often? Come on, raise your hand. Come on. Everybody sees you. Come on. How many of you would say, uh, you complain often? How many of you right now, come on, wherever you're watching from, you are sitting next to somebody and they complain often? Come on. You know that person. It's time. Come on. Confession. Confession, you're sitting next to somebody and they complain. Now, how many of you, you're sitting next to that person and you know they're a complainer and you want to complain about their complaining? Come on, anybody else like that? I just, uh, they complain, I don't like their complaining, and now I want to complain about their complaining. Come on, is it just easy for us to find ourselves in a mode of 
complaining. I don't know about your life, and maybe this is just for me today, but it's so much easier for me to see the bad things in something or someone than it is for me to see the good or the great thing. And I know that's not good for a pastor to admit, but I just think we need to be real today that I can find it so easy to see the bad rather than seeing the good, finding fault in that person or that thing rather than seeing the good thing. And so we're going to talk about that today. What does the Bible have to say about complaining? Because the Bible says that complaining is not a good thing, but the Bible also says that we can do this, like we can do this. We can stop complaining. I love what Helen Keller says. I, I love this. She, her, her, her statements are so fantastic. She says this. She says, be happy with what you have while working for what you want. And I think that sets us up so good today that we need to be happy. We need to be thankful for what we have while working to what we want. So being thankful from a thankful heart creates opportunities for us to just step out and say, I may, I may not be where I want to be, but thank God I'm not where I used to be. I may not have what I want to have, but thank God that I have more than I used to have. Be happy with what you have while working for what you want. Here's what the Bible says about complaining. It says this in Philippians 2. It says, do everything. Come on, say it with me. Do everything. Come on, some of y'all didn't say it. Come on, say it with me. Do everything. Oh, you didn't see it. We're going to do one more time. This is the word right here. Do, read it with me. Do everything. There it is. Do everything without complaining and arguing so that no one will criticize you. Do everything. When the Bible says do everything, guess what that word means? Everything. Do ev every, so, so do fighting without complaining. Do disciplining your kids without complaining. Uh, do, do balancing the checkbook without complaining. Do quarantine. Come on, church. Do quarantine without complaining. Do everything without complaining and arguing so that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and preserve, perverse people. When the Bible says everything, the Bible means everything. The thing that I think we need to understand today is the words that come out of our mouths, the, 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 the actions that come out of our bodies, they are just the symptoms. We cannot just deal with the symptoms. We must get to the heart of everything. And so when I think about this idea of getting to the heart, I often think about a balloon. And I, I, I'm sure you've seen balloons before, but I think about a balloon. How many of you know that a balloon is a balloon and whatever is in the balloon will eventually come out? So the more that I blow up this balloon, the more chances that what is in there will come out because eventually what is in will come out. We love the balloon and we love the outside, but whatever's in the balloon will eventually come out. You'll start filling up with lives and days and weeks. I mean, these quarantine weeks are just coming together and whatever's in this balloon will eventually come out. It would be like this. If I filled up the balloon with a bunch of water and you stood in front of me and I went like this, how many of you know you'd be scared because you'd be afraid, not of the balloon, you'd be afraid of what's in the balloon. Come on, church. See, it's not about the balloon. It's about what's in the balloon. The symptom is the balloon, but what's in the balloon is what really scares us. And so you'd be really afraid about this because of, but if, but if I were to say this, this, this balloon has water in it, but this balloon, you can't hear it, but this balloon has money in it. It has a hundred dollars worth of coins. And some of y'all don't even believe in altar calls, but you'd come forward if I pop this one right now. Why? Because you, you, you'd want to see what was inside of it, what's inside of it. Can I just tell you, the symptoms are your words. The, the symptoms are your actions. But what is inside of you must get fixed before the symptoms can be fixed. In fact, the Bible says this in Matthew chapter 12. It, it talks to us about not the symptoms, but the source. Because we can't just change the symptoms. We've got to change the source. Here's what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 12. It says this, for whatever is in your heart or whatever's in the balloon, whatever's in your heart determines what you say. So whatever's inside of you will eventually come out. 
A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart, and an evil, produce, produce, an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. See, the source is the more important thing than the symptom. The source. So whatever is inside will eventually come out. It goes on to say this. And I tell you this, this is why this is so important that we get to the source. See, we can do this, church. Come on, put a smile on your face, wherever you're watching from. You're like, dear God, I don't know if I can do this. Come on, let's just pause for just a second. I want to say this to you. We can do this. We can do this. We can do it. We can stop complaining. We can do it. I promise you, we can do it. It's going to be hard. It's going to be difficult. But together, we can do this. And this is why we need to believe we can do this. Because we are going to give an account on judgment day for every idle word that we speak. And I don't know about you, but that makes me a little nervous. Because I've had some idle words spoken out of my mouth. I've had some idle actions given from this body. And I'm a little bit nervous, just like you on the other side of this camera, wondering on judgment day, what will it be? And before we go there, can we just, can we just, can we just deal with the source? Can we just deal with the source? Because here's what I know. From a negative heart comes negative words. And then flows negative actions and then produces a miserable life. For instance, how many of you would admit today you have never met a joyful complainer? Come on, nobody, nobody. We've, we've never, you will never, ever, ever meet a joyful complainer. You're like, no, I think I have met a joyful, a, a joyful complainer before. They may be joyful complainer for a day or two, but you can't complain forever. They, they just don't make sense. Just like this, you can't praise and worry at the same, same time. You can't complain and be happy at the same time. One will take precedence. And I think today God is going to do something significant in our life. Because here's what I know about complaining. If I want to ruin my life, and nobody wants to ruin their life, but if I were to want to ruin my life, you know what I would do every single day? I would add a little bit of complaining every single day. Just a little dose of complaining every single day. And at the end of my life, I would have a miserable Life And listen, this is a lot of negativity and I wanna encourage you today. So if you're like me and you would say, you know what? I often feel like the glass is half empty. I have a hard time seeing the good in things. I have a, I have a hard time seeing the great in things. I have a hard time seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. You're in a good place. And let me just say this to you. We can do this. We can do it, but it's going to require some work. It's gonna require some action on our part. I think there's a significant story in the Bible and let me set it up this way. In the book of Numbers, and yes, the book of Numbers, it's Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. It's the fourth book of the Bible. In the the book of Numbers, we read this story and it's arguably one of the most significant stories when it comes to complaining. The Israelites have been in slavery for 400 years and finally God is going to release his children out of slavery. So he calls on Moses and we don't have a lot of time to go into this, but Moses wasn't a preacher. He wasn't a speaker. He got in front of people. His knees would knock. He stuttered and God chose Moses to be the main leader in releasing the Israelites from this slavery in the country of Egypt. And so what he does is he says, here's what I want you to do, Moses. I want you to go to Pharaoh and say, let my people go. And so Moses does that. He goes to Pharaoh and says, I want you to let my people go. Pharaoh says no, and then God brings these 10 plagues. They were awful. You can read about it. It's Man, it was bad. It was like, mosquitoes, come on somebody, mosquitoes, there was locusts and frogs and there was blood and it was, it was terrible. And after these 10 plagues, uh, Pharaoh says, fine, I'll let your people go. And so Moses gathers all the Israelites, they start on their way out of Egypt and, and, and halfway through it, the, the Egyptians, Pharaoh changes his mind. He says, nope, you're not doing that. We're coming after you. So the Israelites find themselves at the edge of the Red Sea, looking at this massive body of water on one side, seeing water on the other side, seeing mountains and land and going, how in the world are we going to get through this? Then miraculously, 
God parts the Red Sea. They begin to walk through it. They get halfway through it. The Egyptians finally catch up to them. The water begins to suffocate the Egyptians, killing majority of them. The Israelites get on the other side. They wander for 40 years, and then they enter what's known as the promised land. But between getting out of Egypt and getting to the promised land, they begin to complain. You're thinking, how in the world could they complain? I mean, they, they just got redeemed and set free from the greatest bondage the world has ever known. But let me just tell you, when you have a complaining spirit, no matter the situation, you'll find a reason to complain. And here's what the story goes. It says like this in, 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 in Numbers 11, the Bible says this, soon, this is soon, this is just after they get out of Egypt, crossing over the Red Sea. Soon the people began, here's our word, began to what? Complain about their hardships. And the, and the Lord heard everything that they said. Some of you today, you're going, well, it doesn't matter. I just don't speak my complaints out loud. Can I just tell you, God hears everything. So soon they began to complain about their hardships and, and the Lord heard everything that they were saying. It goes on. Then the Lord's anger blazed against them. Let me just say this to you. Somebody's always listening. Somebody's always listening. And he sent a fire to rage among them and he destroyed some of the people in the outskirts of the camp. Let me just say this to you. If there was one thing that offends the heart of God, I think it would be complaining. In fact, God's gonna go on to say there's actually consequences for our complaining. And I don't know what you're going through today. I don't know what you're feeling. Maybe your marriage is on the rocks. Maybe you're scared about your kids. Listen, I, I, I cannot imagine what you're going through, but I know what I'm going through in this season. And I can find every opportunity to complain. What keeps me from doing it as much as I should is knowing that there are consequences for my complaining. The story goes on. Then the people screamed to Moses for help. For when he prayed, the Lord... The, the fire began to stop. The, the fire stopped. After that, the area was known as Tibera, which means the place of burning, because the fire from the Lord had burned among them there. The, the, uh, blessing, 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 blessing. You're going, why do these people complain? <laughs> the, st the story doesn't end there. It goes on. Then the, the foreign rabble who were traveling with the Israelites, they began to crave the good things in Egypt. Have you ever been there before? You've got out of that bad season and then you look back and you go, man, I missed that. I miss the guys I used to hang with. I miss what that used to do to me. I miss the feeling that, I, and you think, how do we do that? Even people in the Bible did it. We're out of, we get exactly what we prayed for. We get out of what we prayed for. We get in the season that we prayed to get out of and then we still dream about what it used to be. And here's what they dreamed about. They dreamed about the people of Israel also began to complain, oh, for some meat, oh, to be back in Egypt, they exclaimed. We remember the fish we used to eat when it was free in Egypt. Oh, we, we remember the cucumbers, we remember the melons, the leeks, the onions, oh, the garlic, we had all the garlic we could ever want, but now our appetites are gone. All we ever get is Man, I find it fascinating because go look it up. This word manna, it's like Old Testament Krispy Kreme. I mean, it was, go look it up. It's like this sugary cake substance and, and they would eat it. It was, it, was, it, it was so good. It was like the light is always on at Krispy Kreme. I mean, it was fantastic. It's like getting everything that you dream to get, but it's still not good enough. And you, see, you keep looking back to what you Used to have, but you don't have anymore. And I'm gonna just say something to you. That's why the symptom isn't the problem. We must get to the source. And I wanna encourage you, church, we can do this. We can do this. So let me, let me end practically with us today. You can do it. And I believe you can do it. I think together, if we get together and if we, if we commit to one another, if we pray for one another, if we encourage one another, we can do this. We can stop. Complaining. So let's, let's get real practical, okay? Here, real practical. This is, this is really important for us to get today, and I want you to get in your spirit. So, so, so what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? I'll tell you what we do. Write it down. Do not complain. Some of y'all need to write that down. What do we do? Do not 
complaint. Can I just say this to you, and I don't want to hurt your feelings, but I need to step on your toes for a second. Some of us, what we complain about, others praise God for. Some of you right now, you're, you're, you're complaining about your marriage, and there are single people watching today that would give everything to be married. Some of you are complaining about your kids. My kids, my kids, my kids. But there are people watching today that would give anything to just be a mom or a dad. Some of you right now, you're complaining because you've got to go to work in this quarantine season when there are millions of people that would love to just have a job. Because the truth of the matter is this, what you and I complain about, others would praise God for. And that's why we must stop complaining. Let's, let's just go back to Philippians 2. What's the Bible say? It says this, do everything without complaining and arguing. And so here's what we've got to do today. Wherever you're watching from, we've got to stop focusing on the bad things. We, we, got to, we got to look at that situation, whatever it is that you're complaining about, we must look at it with a new set of lenses and say, what do we have in common? What is it that we like? Okay, I'm so mad at my wife. I'm so mad. I'm so mad. I'm so mad. Well, what, 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 what made you fall in love with them? Well, I'm so ticked off at this. Okay, well, what made you enjoy it when you were back in Egypt? What, what, what was it? We, we've, got to, we've got to deal with the source. What is the reason why you're complaining? Because the source will always change the symptoms, but the symptoms re rarely will fix the source. So with your boss or your coworkers or wherever, we must stop complaining. Ephesians 4 says this. It says this. It says, do not let, how many know this word? Any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. None. Like stop complaining, stop arguing, stop talking disrespectful. Like do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. It goes on. But only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs that it may benefit those who listen. Listen, we gotta build people up. Do not complain. I'll tell you, that's what we do. That is the what. Do not complain. And so here's my encouragement to you today. Wherever you're watching from, here's what I want you to do today. We're getting ready to start a brand new week. Here's what I want you to do today. Whenever you get the urge to complain or argue or bicker, here's what I want you to do. Watch me, look at my mouth. Here's what I want you to do. You're going, what are you doing? I'm biting my tongue. And some of y'all today, you need to get the spiritual gift of biting your tongue. This, just bite it. Because I'm going to tell you right now, one of the most spiritual things that you can do in this quarantine season is just shut it. Just shut your mouth. Do not complain. That's the what. Now why? What, so why don't complain? Why should we not complain? I'm glad you asked. Here's the why. Write it down. Get it in your notes. Why do this? So that you can be more like Christ. And that's the goal of everybody watching today, is that you would be more like Christ. You would look like Jesus. You would act like Jesus. You would talk like Jesus. You would respond like Jesus. And so the very next verse, verse 14 says, do not complain or argue. Here's what verse 15 says. It says, this is why we don't complain or argue, so that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault and a warped or crooked generation. That's why we don't complain. And I'm going to say something to you that may hurt your feelings today, but I wanted to encourage you, even though it hurts a little bit, you are not, you ready for it? You are not the main character of your life. You're not. You're not the main character. You are a character. Come on, somebody, you're a character. You're a character of your life, but you're not the main character. And the sooner you realize you're not the main character of your life, the easier it will be for you to do the what, which is do not complain, and to understand the why, which is so that you can be more like Jesus. He is the center of the plot. And this is the goal, church. This is the goal, that you would look more like Jesus. That's why he came. Yes, to give you salvation, but also to help you look like him. So what do we do? We said it already. Come on, write it down. What do we do? Do not complain. That's the what. What do we do? Do not complain. So why? Here's the why. Why? Why don't complain? I mean, I mean, why don't complain? Because we want to look more like Jesus. That's why. And here's the how. 
So how, how do we not complain? Here you go, write it down. Here's how we don't complain. Choose to rejoice no matter what. It's a decision. So you're not, it's not a pill you take. It's not words that you change. It's a decision that you make. You're gonna have to make a decision to rejoice no matter what. The, the passage goes on, verse 17 and 18, says this, but even if I'm being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice and service coming from your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. See, listen, this is what Paul was saying, writing it from a prison cell, even if I die, even if I die, I'm gonna choose. I'm not rejoicing because I'm dying. I'm not rejoicing because of the pain. I'm not rejoicing because of the hurt. It's not, see, that's the symptom. I'm not rejoicing because of what I'm getting or feeling. I'm rejoicing because of who Jesus is and what he's done for me. That this life is but a vapor. And even if I die, I'm gonna rejoice because of who he is. I mean, think about this. Adam complained about Eve. Job complained about his life. The Israelites complained about manna from heaven. And would you disagree with me today? It's so easy to complain. That's why we gotta understand the what. What do we do? Do not complain. Why? So that we can look more like Jesus. How? How do we do this? Rejoice in everything. Even if it or that or those people die, I'm choosing to rejoice. See, there's a reality to this. The answer can't be just don't complain. See, you can't, you can't just eliminate something without replacing it. You've got to eliminate complaining and replace it with something else. I love how this verse goes on. It goes on to say this. So too, so you too should be glad and rejoice with me. Here's, here's what I love about this idea of substituting complaining with something else. Write it down, get in your spirit. Many of us, we are quick to blame God, blame God for the bad and slow to thank God for the good. Come on, can we just be honest today, church, wherever you're watching from? If you're, if you're anything like me, it's so easy to blame God. Oh God, I'm in this situation. Oh God, I don't have any leeks and cucumbers and melons. Oh, oh God, I don't, I'm not married anymore. Oh God, you gave me these dang kids. Oh, oh God, I'm going through this. It's easy to get quick and blame God for what's going bad. But I think today, I think for many of us, we need to realize not just that, but we are so slow to thank God for the good. Would you agree with me that something happens bad in our life and we quickly get mad at God, but when something good happens, days, weeks, months, and sometimes years will go by before we actually give God the credit for what he's done. We can do it, church. We can do it. We can do it. Let's start giving God credit for the good things and stop always giving him the blame for the bad things. But listen, stopping complaining cannot be the final goal. You've got to replace it. So what do you replace complaining with? Because complaining is, ugh. nobody wants to complain and we all know it's bad. So what do we replace it with? What's the antidote for complaining? I want you to write it down. Man, get this. If you get nothing, I want you to grab a hold of this. Write this down. Get in your spirit. Unexpressed gratitude is expressed in gratitude. Unexpressed gratitude is expresses it expresses gratitude. Unexpressed gratitude expresses ingratitude. Come on, let's get in our spirit. Let's read this a couple more times. Unexpressed gratitude expresses ingratitude. Come on, get this. Think about your life. Unexpressed unspoken gratitude speaks ingratitude. Think about it. Think about your situation. Think about your quarantine. Think about your marriage. Think about your kids. Think about your job. Think about your finances. Come on, think through that lens. Unexpressed gratitude expresses ingratitude. See, the antidote for complaining is gratitude. It's to rejoice. It's to celebrate. So what we need to do is turn our complaining into gratitude. I love how this scripture, I wanna end with a scripture and then I wanna end with a question. I love 1 Chronicles 16. Listen to what the Bible says. It says that we are, this is a, a message and a method, a message and a, and a command to us as Christians. Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. His faithful love endures 
forever. Come on, can we just admit that today? That his faithful love endures forever. God's faithful love endures forever. And so can you just admit with me today, come on, wherever you're watching from, that you're like me and you may have a little bit of an issue with complaining. You have an issue with complaining. Can we just make the decision that we're gonna do the what? We're gonna not complain. We can do it. We can stop complaining. Why do this? Why stop complaining? Because you know what? What we wanna do is we wanna look more like Jesus. And no, no matter the situation, we wanna look like Jesus. No matter the diagnosis, no matter the situation, no matter the bank account, we wanna look like Jesus. That's why. How do we do it? I'll tell you how we do it. We rejoice. We turn our complaining spirit into a grateful heart. So here's a question I wanna ask you today is this. What can you do today to turn complaining into gratitude? What can you do today to turn complaining into gratitude? I wanna I want go back to that illustration of that balloon. I think about this, this thing, this, this balloon, your, your life. See, it's, it's a balloon, but, but really it's your life. It's, it's your life. And the outside is painted in some way. But what's on the inside will eventually come out. And when it comes out, let me ask you a question, George. When it comes out, will you be happy with what's inside? Or can we make a decision today to turn our complaining into gratitude? I think you can do it. I think, you know what? I think we can do it. I think we can. I think we can do it. I think we can, like last week, I think we could stop making excuses. I think we can do it. I think today we can stop complaining, but it's gonna, you're going to have to change the source before you try to eliminate the symptom. So let me pray for you, wherever you're watching from, wherever you're watching from, let me pray for you. If you would bow your head and close your eyes, no matter where you're watching from, I wanna pray for you. Father, I pray for each and every person within the sound of my voice. God, I don't know what they're going through. I don't know what they're struggling through. And God, I know as I preach this message, of not complaining. I can't imagine that some on the other side of this camera are going, but you don't know my situation. You don't know my life. You don't know my marriage. You don't know my finances. You don't know what I'm going through. And so Father, I pray right now for that person, whatever they're going through. God, I don't wanna act like I have it all together. I don't wanna act like I have all the answers, but I know what your word says. Your word says this. It says that we should not complain. Why? So we look more like you and rejoice to turn our complaining spirit into a grateful heart. So Father, as we continue to pray, I can't help but wonder on the other side of this camera if there's some people that have never given their life to you. They've never crossed the line of faith. Maybe they've been to church before. Maybe as they're watching this service, maybe they would say, you know what, I've, I used to go, I used to be involved, I used to, I used to, but something happened, someone happened, this situation happened. And today, I think I need to give my life to Jesus. So I wanna pray for you. In fact, I want you to join in with me on this prayer. Maybe you're watching today and you would say this, I, I need to give my life to Jesus. I need to give him my life. I need, I need to commit today that we can do this. Me and Jesus, we can do this. So you pray this prayer wherever you're watching from. Father, would you come into my life? Would you eliminate a complaining spirit? Would you give me the joy of my salvation today? Thank you for the cross. I thank you for your sacrifice. I thank you that you didn't complain when you walked through what you did. Be the joy in all of my life. Come in, God. I need you. In Jesus' name, amen. Man, come on, if you prayed that prayer, can we celebrate with every single person who prayed that prayer? Come on, to give their life to Jesus Christ. Come on, let's celebrate, church. Come on, let's give praise for each and every one of them. Let me just say this again. We're so glad that you joined with us today in worship. And if you made that all-important decision to put Jesus first in your life, we would love to know about it. We wanna help you with your next step, but we also wanna celebrate with you. There are a few different ways you can let us know you made that decision. You can actually text the word BELIEVE to 813-534-4033.
You can comment right now, right there in the online chat. You can do it there. Or you can actually go to our website, wellspringfl.com slash connect. You can fill out the online connection card right there. Whichever way you decide to communicate with us, your decision to put Jesus first will be perfectly fine. All we want to do is walk with you on this brand new journey that you're having with Jesus Christ. Now, to all of our guests, we hope that you've enjoyed your time with us and even know that this has been through an online experience and it's a little bit unique. I pray and our hope is that you and your family have felt a part of this. We know that this can be such a unique way to visit a church and we want to do all that we can to answer any questions you may have and just simply to let you know that our deepest desire is to connect with you to all that God is doing right here at Wellspring. So all we ask is that you visit wellspringfl.com forward slash connect. Fill out that online connection card so we can reach out to you this week. Now, there are so many ways that, that you can stay connected during this week as you go about your day. You can follow us on Facebook. You can follow us on Instagram. You can go to Wellspring FL to get Facebook and Instagram to keep up with all that is going on right here at this church. We want you to know that we are here for you. We love our community. We love you. And we believe that we are better together. April and I are praying for you this week and believing the best is yet to come. God bless you, church.